Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back, and thank you for coming back for week two of our Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Really good to see you. Hello, hello. If you're just joining chat, to make sure you give me a little shout out so I can give you a shout out back. We've got LaDonna, Michelle, good morning. Good to see you all. What's up, Chad? I saw that you were very excited about brush making. That is what we're gonna be covering today. Very, very cool. What's up, Sam? Good to see you, Jesse. Hello, hello. Awesome. So this is week two of our daily creative challenge. Uh, if you are just joining us for the first time, this is an awesome way for you to build your Photoshop skills. Over two weeks, we're gonna be covering nine challenges in total, and today is challenge five is exciting. We are over halfway there. Ooh, David says, hello, Kathleen from France. Bonjour, David. Good to see you, Anthony or Anathai. Good to see you. Good to see you. Matthew, hello, hello, Dev. All right. So we're going to jump into things pretty quickly. We have our Daily Creative Challenge sign up page uh, if you'd like to register for the challenge. And this is also where you can come to check out the different challenges each day. So all the way back on day one, we did editing color oh, so long ago, a whole seven days ago. And if you wanna go back and rewatch the video, rewatch the live stream, you can do that by clicking watch video right here. And then here is the challenge for today, brush making. So we're gonna be working on texture brushes, making them with a free app that Adobe has called Adobe Capture. If you haven't heard of it, your mind is gonna be blown. It is seriously such a diamond. Uh, and then we're gonna use the brush that we make on our mobile device in Photoshop to hand letter the title of our chosen book. So if you are new, the challenge for this two weeks is to be doing book cover redesigns. Since, since it is spooky season, I am doing all scary books with a heavy uh, leaning on Stephen King books because I'm a big fan. Uh, today's book is The Green Mile which I guess isn't really a book, it's more of a novella, but that's that's the details. Don't need to get into those. We've got Eric Sue in the chat. Heal day, good to see you. Ooh, Arya says, I've heard of Adobe Capture, but I've never used it. Okay, let's go ahead and use it. So first, I want to uh, show you really quick that you can join us on Discord. This is community chat. So we have this live stream every morning, but it's only 25 minutes. If you wanna have access to the creative community 24 seven, you can join us on Discord where you can find the new challenges every single day. Thank you, Sam, for posting today's challenge. You can also uh, post your current challenge to get feedback, which I'll show you how to do at the end of the stream. And then you can also just come over here and chat and ask questions. We've got screenshots galore going on. This is very spooky, <laughs> Snoopy. I am afraid <laughs> of that. <laughs> so come over and join us. If you wanna join us on Discord, there's a really quick little link you can type in. It's bit.ly slash PS Discord. Capital, there it is. Capital P and capital S, very important. What's up Cheryl from Florida? Good to see you. Anathai, that is a great piece of feedback. Thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. So we're going to be recreating this cover today. This is The Green Mile. And have, is, has anyone read The Green Mile? Has anyone watched the movie? The movie's really good. It's like a really uh, rare case of the movie being almost as good as the book, I would say. Cornelian says, go Astros. Go Astros. They did something, didn't they? Sports, <laughs> tell, tell me about it, Cornelian. What's up, Jason? So if you uh, would believe it or not, this brush that I used to hand letter the title, I actually made by taking a picture of a texture I made and turning it into a brush with my phone. It's pretty crazy. It is a beautiful, beautiful brush. Let me do a little demonstration really quick. Look at that. Kyle Webster, who? Just kidding, Kyle is an amazing. Lovely person. <laughs> but I'm gonna show you how to do something very similar to this by taking a picture with your phone. Oh, they won the World Series. Nice, Jason. Cool, so we can hop over to my phone, if possible. Magic. And if you don't know, this bottom uh, app that I have, Adobe Capture, that's what Capture looks like. I'm going to tap it, open it up, and then we can click this camera icon, tap it, I guess is the more accurate thing to say. And when I do, you'll see these tabs at the bottom of the screen. 
So we have colors, that's what is selected right now. Do you guys wanna see yourselves? That's you. <laughs> uh, you can see it kinda trying to choose a color palette. You can make a vector shape. But what we wanna do is make a brush. So I'm gonna scroll through these tools and choose brush. Now I need to make the texture that I wanna make my brush out of. So I have a beautiful piece of paper right here. I have some uh, chalk, chalk. I have a pencil. So I'm just gonna really quickly make a little bit of a texture. You guys get a live view. This is like I'm, I'm really live streaming. So I'm going to add a little bit of texture. I like how it's kind of picking up some loose pigment on the edge. Perfect. I'm gonna increase the slider. This is gonna make a really nice little chalk brush for me. You can even tap the screen to freeze the camera. Boom. And let's move forward. All right, so when I click the OK, it takes me to my style options. Now I wanna choose a style that is gonna be um, compatible with Photoshop. So those are gonna be these top brushes, Photoshop and Fresco brushes. <laughs> Someone notified Kyle some shade was thrown. Oh my gosh, don't make Kyle come for me. He is too, he's too powerful. We also have styles for just using Adobe Sketch. So those are these ones. And you can check them all out. So let's use one of these top Photoshop options. I'll just choose the top one. Now let's move over to crop. You can do a little live preview. We can increase and decrease and rotate the sizes. Look at that. Look at the texture at the tails. Those are so nice. Adobe Capture is AI, artificial intelligence or Adobe Illustrator. It's kind of both. Aria says absolute magic. We see the mobile device at last. Ha ha. <laughs> Is this app only available on Apple phones? I believe it's on Apple and Android, I believe. And you can use it on tablets as well, which I actually prefer to use it on an iPad. You have a little bit more um, kind of custom ability. Okay, so from here we can increase the size. We'll say probably around 40 is good. You can choose the smallest size that it can possibly be. We're just gonna keep that at zero. You can choose the different angles. So say you wanted to make more of like a chisel brush, then you would choose this initial option. Let's go with directional. I want it to be very fluid and have these nice textures at the corners. Thank you, Chad. Yes, both iOS and Android. Thank you, LaDonna. Perfect. And here you can play with your spacing. Now the really cool thing about this is you can do all of these tweaks and edits but then once we actually get into Photoshop, we also have full control over editing it and that as well. This is looking good. You can choose how much a jitter you have in the size. I'm gonna increase it a little bit because I want it to feel a little more handmade. Please marry me, Adobe Capture, I love you. No, it's marrying me <laughs> first. Everybody loves Adobe Capture. All right, we're gonna play with the angle jitter just a little bit. Perfect, and then on the end, we can refine it if you wanna make any last minute changes. Whoops, that is not what I wanted it to do. There we go. Ooh, that looks cool. I actually really like that. It has a little bit more character to it. Okay, and then we're gonna save it. So I'm just tapping save in the top right. Just thinking about it, yes, Adobe Capture, you can access my photos. Okay, so magically this will appear in Photoshop if you have a CC subscription, it will send it right over. So if we pop into Photoshop, you will notice that I have some that are already created and we'll just wait for this new one to populate. Uh, but in the case that it doesn't, I will just show you quickly how you can edit these brushes you make. Oh, there it is, see? Brush seven, that's the one we just made. Amazing. Tanvir says, any, any news regarding Fresco for desktop? Uh, no news on that. It's very good, it's a very good mobile app though. I prefer using it on iPad personally. Okay, so we have brush seven and let's try it out. We're gonna increase our size. Look at that awesome texture. 
I made that with my phone? Are you serious? What? I'm actually genuinely impressed with myself. That was pretty cool. I didn't even really do it though. Capture did it. So if you're using a tablet, you have a lot more kind of custom ability too with your opacity and your pressure. So if I press a lot harder, it's gonna be more concentrated, that kind of thing. But I have my brush selected up here. I can come into my settings by clicking this little brush folder. And then we can edit it even further. So I can add texture, we can add color dynamics if we want the two colors to blend together. We can add smoothing, which I don't really have it on, but if you wanted to do some really smooth hand lettering, I'll show you how you do that. I'll zoom out, increase my smoothing to 100. And this will be helpful if you don't have a tablet, if you're just hand lettering with a mouse. You can get some really smooth. Hello letters. Cool. Philippa says I have to use, start using Capture more. Yeah, and it's free. So you can make brushes, you can make color palettes, you can make gradients. Gradients are new. It's amazing. You can even make 3D material patterns. You can take a picture of your couch and apply it to a 3D couch. What? It's wild. <laughs> Capturing Kathleen, what a duo. What an iconic duo. Okay, so as you can see, I hand lettered the green mile here with my brush that I've made previously. I made a couple little tweaks to it. And then I came in and used one of Kyle's wonderful brushes. I think it was the deliciously dry brush to do this really cool kind of green mile uh, symbol. So I'm gonna show you how to get access to all of Kyle's awesome brushes if you have a CC subscription. You're gonna come up here to your brushes, click this cog, and then you're gonna click get more brushes. And that's gonna take you to this site. If you are logged in with your Creative Cloud subscription, you will see tons of brushes that you can just download and use. It's pretty amazing. So as you can see, I have lots of Kyle brushes. I have the Mega Pack, all of his erasers, the drawing brush. There's a lot to choose from. You can even organize them further from there. MB says, I love to use Capture to get new font ideas from signs and billboards on the street. Yes, isn't that amazing? You can take a picture of a sign and it will let you know what font was used. And if they can't identify it, they'll let you know really similar ones that you can use for free with Adobe Fonts. What else do you guys like to do with Capture? I'm interested. So if we were to start from the beginning, let me turn off these hand lettering layers. I'm just gonna take you through the whole workflow. Say we wanted to do a little bit of hand lettering. I'm gonna decrease my smoothing just a little bit. Rearrange my workspace. Everybody's got their own workspace they wanna work with. There we go. So I'm gonna just start writing. And then once we actually letter this, we can then select individual letters and re resize them as needed. I'm going to start with green because that's kind of the, the middle base word for this title. And then I like these kind of weird swoopy M's. They don't look very good, but I like them. And then I'm going to use my selection tools, which we have been covering. For the last week, we should be very familiar with them. I'm gonna do Command T. You can match the sizes. Let's do that. Select the whole word with my lasso tool. Tap V to move it. Maybe we even want to move these letters up. This is the really cool thing about hand lettering. I think a lot of people think that they just need to have nice handwriting. But it's really not that. You're drawing letters and then you're using your skills to move them around and compose them in a nice way. And now I can type the, not type, I'm writing. This is being done very quickly, so I would encourage you to take a little more time with it. We can then move this around, even put it on top, maybe over here. 
Yes. This is the fun part where you just get to move things around, push and pull. Maybe we'll decrease <clears throat> the size here a little bit. Move it down here. Grab this. Now, if you do wanna get feedback on your designs, like say you're working with these kind of compositions and moving things around and pushing and pulling and you're just not sure you might get stuck, um, you can post your works in progress on Discord. So I could go to Discord right now in the current challenge feedback. I could post a screenshot of my lettering and say, what do you guys think? How could I push and pull this to make it a little bit better? Yes, you can also adjust uh, pressure sensitivity on your tablet, great point. So if I were to activate this up here at the top, if I press really lightly, my brush gets smaller. And if I press down harder, my brush gets bigger. And you can change uh, what those do as well. Maybe if I press more lightly, the brush gets more tapered, that kind of thing. <laughs> Carlos says I was really shaky when he just tried. Make sure you turn your smoothness up, your smoothing. I have mine cranked up. You do not need to be ashamed of that. All right, so I'm gonna turn that off and turn the one that I did originally back on when I had a little more time to finesse. Let's move this out of the way. Yeah, give it another shot, Carlos. You really can take a lot of time with hand lettering. It doesn't need to just be like a boom, I'm awesome, it's done. Thanks, Kiara. I took a hand lettering class in college and we would be hand lettering like a logo or a type treatment. And we'd literally have pieces of paper that were like 20 feet long and just covered in the same thing over and over again. And you might like the G from this one and the E from this one. And then you can kind of Frankenstein them together in Photoshop. So what I did originally was I, let me turn this off, hand lettered this in black because I like to can we take the and make the stroke more small? Yeah, that's a good point. It's a good idea, Stone. I did this in black because I like to write in black first. And then this is a little trick I like to do. I applied a solid fill color on top of it. So the way that I do that is you come down to here, your adjustment layers, click solid color. Let's choose, let's say blue. And then when I do that, if you clip it, to the layer below it, that makes only the green mile blue. And then I can double click on these color swatches and just change it at will. I don't have to like reselect it with the lasso tool or anything. It's a really nice way to quickly change colors, especially if you're working on like client work. Uh, if they say, actually, we want the logo to be red and you're not working in Illustrator, this is a good way to do it. Okay, so I did that with white. I added my black background also a solid color. Let's clip that. And then like I said, I used the deliciously dry brush from Kyle to make this texture right here. And I didn't really love that color, so I did the same thing. I applied a solid fill color layer and kind of played with different greens. I wanted it to be a little more like sickly, not neon, um, but the green mile, I don't know if you know, it's kind of talking about the green linoleum of a floor in a prison. It's like called the green mile. So it's not exactly the, the nicest green. That's why I chose this kind of like neon mossy green. Anothai says, I just used until you gave the three E letters. Well, you could just copy and paste the same letter or you could choose a way to build the letter. For example, I did this strong vertical stroke and then three shorter ones to build the E. I repeated that technique, changed the size of the And then I turned off the title layer because we hand lettered our own titles. I froze for a few seconds, am I back? And then I also decided to add a little bit more of an illustrative uh, aspect to this. So this doesn't have anything to do with hand lettering, but in the book there is a mouse character um, so I decided to add that. And then I applied a little bit of texture on top of the mouse. So if we zoom in here, you'll notice that it has these nice little like stroke marks here. I believe that is on this layer. Yep. So this is the mouse originally. I used a layer mask, which we covered last week. Used those similar texture brushes and erased through the mouse so that 
the green from behind was revealed. And you can see over here in my mask, those little texture pieces are represented. Okay, gave him a little white eye to make him stand out a little bit better. And there we go. So we can export this and get it uploaded onto Behance super quickly. Let's go to File, Export As, <laughs> Cute Mouse, thanks. It's really easy to uh, add illustrative elements to your designs, even if you aren't an illustrator. You can find like vector shapes on Adobe Stock uh, and bring them into Photoshop and you can apply filters to them to make them look a little more illustrated. You can add a layer mask like this, add a little bit of texture to it. There's really uh, tons of options. If you're not an illustrator, you can still make illustrative work. All right, let's say green mile. Save that, and I actually just realized that I made it the wrong size, so let's export that again. Oops. Yeah, Chad says almost all Tom, Tom Hanks movies are amazing. Tom Hanks is in the Green Mile, if you are a fan. It's one of the best. John Coffey, love him. Whoops, that was the wrong one. There we go. That sounds better, 900. Perfect. We'll just save over the one that we just did. Green Mile. Philippa says, I always use Save As. Totally up to, do, up to you. Uh, what's the difference between Save As and Export As? I will show you. So when I go to File, Save As, you don't get as many options. You get to choose your format, and you get to choose if you save as a copy. But if you go up to File, Export As, you can choose your format, you can choose your quality, your image size, you can crop it with canvas size. You can even export different sizes. So say I needed to export a bunch of different versions for different parts of the web, like I needed a little banner version or a little icon version. You can choose to export one at two times the size, that kind of thing. So you just get a couple more options. That is the wrong one. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's get this uploaded on to Behance. We are inside my project. Now if you want to know how to edit your own project, you're going to go to your Behance portfolio, hover over this cog, click edit. We're going to scroll down, look at all these awesome designs we've made. <laughs> all of the backgrounds are super dark. And then Fridays from last week was like, boom, orange, whoa. All right, let's add day five, brush making. It's also super easy to make a brush in Photoshop. Uh, I think I included a link to how to do that in the getting started instructions for today. So if you'd rather just make your brush in Photoshop, easy peasy. Nor says Carrie is my favorite. That one was cool, right? What's up, D? Alrighty, remember in settings and in discoverability, we need to have PS daily challenge set as our keywords so that when we want to search for other people's projects on Behance, that is how we can find it. And don't forget to also up, uh, upload your work to Discord. I believe they're going to be giving feedback for these challenges today in the next stream. So maybe we can pop up the schedule really quick before I head off and I'll let you know what's going to be coming down the pipe for today. All right, we are finishing the daily creative challenge right now. Uh, Elizabeth Goodspeed is up next with some cool graphic design goodness, also reviewing your challenges from today. So if you have a work in progress, make sure you get that uploaded. Peter's gonna be on at 11.30 to do a daily creative challenge for XD. And then we're gonna have more XD goodness after that at 12. All right, yeah, I agree. Philippa, easy peasy lemon squeezy. With that, I am out. We're gonna have more Photoshop graphic design coming up next, and I will see you tomorrow for the next challenge. Bye, everybody.